Guess who's back? Back, 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 back again. Again, again. <laughs> Luchi's back. Back, back. <laughs> back. Tell, Tell a friend. Friend, friend. We're back, Guess baby. Back. <laughs> Guess who's back. in Boston, ladies and gentlemen. Quick, quick round of applause for Lutra. Quick, Welcome back. Quick. Welcome back. Sitting? Welcome back. Is this uh, is this the greatest spot in the world or what? <laughs> it is. Yeah. Don't, don't just say that I, because I, you got the a feisty East Boston Italian stallion on your starboard side here. You, you speak your, your truth. No, I love it here. You know what? I, I spent eight years here and then I was gone for eight years. So it's so nice to be back. I, yeah. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's funny you guys saying that song when I <laughs> when I did my Instagram post that I resigned here. I was gonna put that as like the song in the yep. background, yep. Yep. but I actually didn't know how to do it, so oh, I, right. I messed that there up. You I'll that. Yep. So, put that up for you. Yeah. That's yours. You know. Yeah. So no um, trademarked. But yeah, so it's good to be back. We we were just talking about all this new shit that they built yes. here. Yes. It's, yes. It's pretty. It's pretty awesome to see. It's pretty great to see how much the city's grown in the last yes. eight years. And uh, pretty cool to be back. It's uh, it's yeah. cool to have you back. Yeah, it's good to have you back. I want to I want to take it back to where uh, a star was actually born here. Right. Great movie. And Love I remember movie. I'm watching and I'm, and like my dad, who's just hockey guy, yeah. like oh this kid's supposed to be pretty good. This kid's supposed to be pretty good. Milan Lucic, you were wearing fucking sixty two or something yeah. like the tryout mm. number. First mm -hmm. shift comes out, feeds a guy his lunch. Right? Was that? <laughs> Was that something where you knew you're coming in? I'm gonna I'm gonna set the tone. I'm gonna make my name known here as like a as a hockey guy being like you fight to stay on the team. I know it's getting a little away from that. Lately, well, you know what? That's 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 how I always made a good impression. You know, right. I always had to do something to stand out, and right. and you know, fighting was a way that I would make teams. You right. know, I you know because. People would always say, "Oh, he kind of looks. He's not. He kind of looks slow. He might not be the greatest skater. Oh, uh, you know, we don't know if, if he's a good enough score. So I had to do something, right. you know, exactly. to, yeah. to to make sure that they would keep me in the lineup. And mm -hmm. and for me, it was it was fighting. Yep. And you know what? And I wanted to make a good impression. You know, my first home game as a Bruin." <laughs> Uh, and you know, I wanted to do whatever I needed to do to stay on the team. And to be perfectly honest, and I've said this before, you know, I only heard, I only heard rumbles of, you know, Bostonians and yep. Boston fans mm -hmm. and the big bad Bruins and all that type of stuff. But I, I didn't know the history of, of right. Boston sports. Yeah. I didn't know the history of Bruins and Bruins oh, fans. Yeah. So crazy over here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just like, I just did it. Cause that's, that was me, you know, that's right. what I, that, that's what I do. And so for me to have that connection and win the fans over kind of right off the get go right. was a pretty cool thing to do. And, yeah, and, and I've said this before too. I don't think there could have been a better spot for me to get drafted and start my my yeah, career right. than a place like this place. Right? Is it tough being the most handsome man in the NHL? Do you find that, <laughs> that hard? It gets hard at times. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Is it, you yeah, know? yeah it's, Who's the ugliest bastard in the in the NHL? If you had to name one, I don't know. I can't say that. <laughs> you can just text us later or something. Yeah, yeah. she was. Uh, yeah. No, but going back to how you're saying, like, oh no, he was ready to say it. Were no, you I was to say, say it? I, I think I think I like to say that, like, for the most part, hockey guys are good looking guys. Exactly. Yeah, right. you know? Exactly. We, yeah. We got a I great, like we got a great frame, great yes. physique. For yes. the most part, everyone takes care, grooms himself real yeah. nice. It looks right. phenomenal. You know. Uh, we all, you know, dress real nice. So yes, yeah, I, I, fits. yeah. I think, yep. I think, I think, guys, for the most part, are are pretty good looking in this. League. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can agree. I like Take it away. No, I was gonna say back to how you were saying, like you you heard like talk about the Boston fans and stuff like that, but and you got them right away. Now that you've left for eight years, do you like truly feel coming back to Boston? Like, yep, Boston fans are like the ultimate fans, or like, and you be honest. No, we yeah, gotta do better I, if we have to. I, do. I think so. I and and I truly believe that, and that's a big part of the reason why I wanted to come back because I I, I miss that feeling of yeah. of playing in front of the Boston fan, yeah. you know, and and you know what, they're hard on you. Oh yeah, they yeah. put a lot of <laughs> pressure on you. Right, right. They they what do they expect? They expect championships. Right. They exactly. expect winning. They they expect uh, blood, sweat, and tears. Right. You know, they expect effort. And 
you know what, like, and, and as an athlete, when you have that little bit of pressure from them, you know, it, it for me, it, it brought out the best, best in me. And, yeah. and I had that connection with the fans. And, and to be honest, I, you know, I remember being a 19 year old when I was here and I was, didn't know if I was going to make the team or not, you know, um, that fall, the fall of, of 2007, I, I, I went to game six and seven of the ALCS when they were playing mm. uh, Cleveland. Oh, wow. And you know what? I was like, really? This is how people cheer for baseball? <laughs> yeah. I, didn't know. Yeah. I thought people yeah. just kind of just sit on their hands and yep. yeah, you right, know, right. just eat peanuts and yeah. right. eat hot dogs. But it was like... <laughs> Wicked hardcore, you know. Wicked babies. Wicked hardcore. No, it was yeah. We were sitting in the grandstand and right field and all that type of stuff and and yeah, I was like, wow, this is this is this is this is different. You yeah. know, being a West Coaster from Vancouver, you know, I mean, you know, we have our Canucks, uh, but other than that, you know, they have CFL football and you know. That has a good turnout, but it's it's not really hardcore. Right. But like I come here and like I said, you know, they're the Red Sox win the championships. Um, the Patriots are going sixteen and yeah, all. Going yeah, nuts. You know, and, and I never really understood because I was in Canada my whole life until I came here. I never understood the culture of like NFL football either. Right. I never right. understood like you know, like the tailgating, the the people getting together doing cookouts right. and, and what Sunday meant. You yeah, know, especially totally. when the Patriots were not not today's Patriots. Yeah. Right, well, they suck no. now. We can just say that. We actually didn't even watch the game yesterday. I didn't is, watch one snap yeah. either. Oh, like, God. God. They got no. smoked. Hot take. Yeah. They Should got Mac smoked. Jones be fired? What are your thoughts there? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, just, just don't put him on the spot. This show is, you know, it's, it's loosely called No Limits, and they're under yeah. they got a, I think they got a lot of, uh, lot of things they need to... To figure out, yeah, they got to do because here's but, the thing: if I if I did my job like that, I'd be fired. You know what I mean? So you got to something's got to give here. To think about. But they had, you know, like you had 20 years of success. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, that's probably right. why yeah. we're yeah. All so antsy. That, yeah, you're, that's a great point. 20 years of success. At some point, you know, it's gonna be a rebuild. It's not yes. gonna right. continue. Yeah. Yes, you know what it was. But going back to the spot, Boston fan, like I said, they expect they oh, expect. Yeah the most so, so it's, yeah. it's hard for a boston fan to not uh you know to watch what we watched the last totally. two games but yeah. yeah i don't uh but like i said i think the 20 years that uh patriots fans had is 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 pretty good i agree oh, yeah. yeah i agree oh, yeah. great well, gotta run. good to be a part of get back on this hockey tip real Please. quick because there yes. are some uh good rivalries in the nhl nothing like the bruins and the Habs. but back when you were with us the first time I always remembered as soon as Lucic gets on the ice and Mike Commissaric, mm. it was a throwdown, was showdown hard. every time. Commissaric then went to Toronto. It was mm. the same yeah. thing. Was there real beef there or was it just the competitiveness between both of you that every time you guys were out together, it seemed like you were going to go? Uh, I, th I think it was, I think it was both. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was both two highly competitive guys, two bigger guys, and he was a right D man and I was a left wing. So we, so oh. we lined up against each other. Mm -hmm. So yeah, same thing, like a corner and a receiver, you yeah. know, yeah, uh, it's just, so it just naturally happened. And when I got here at that time, it was, uh, the rivalry was kind of one sided. Yeah. You know, mm. Montreal, I think had won like 15 straight yep. against us. <laughs> yeah. Right. And we finally beat him. I think the first time in the playoffs that year, in in 2008 so but yeah I, was there a beef i i, I think there was a beef yeah. for sure yeah. i like hearing uh, that yeah, that's good <laughs> you need a little of that you know what and and i think not just our sport i think all a lot of sports is yeah. kind of lacking that beef yes. totally. you know exactly. and i think that hatred and 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 rivalry and you know fire uh that fa athletes have had against each other totally it's kind of gone away you know guys right. are all friends now they're all yeah. instagram yeah and, you know, exactly. it's social media buddies and they're all work out together and yeah, all that bullshit right. yep. but you know back then it wasn't like that and to be honest like i said it was kind of the rivalry wasn't really it wasn't really there mm -hmm. and i guess i guess you know you can say me and mike we we were the storyline that kind of brought it back right yeah exactly. you know just because of our beef and and he was a physical guy mm -hmm. he liked to hit and he hit hard and so did i and and you know he wasn't the greatest of fighters but 
I give him credit too. He didn't back down. Oh you yeah, know? he he still yeah. fought me what three times. Yep. Uh, he still tried to hit me every chance he got, just the right. same way I tried to hit him. So you know that was kind of like the start. Uh, of that rivalry and then in 08 we played him in the playoffs oh nine we played him in the playoffs in 2011 yeah. we played him in the playoffs yeah. and then in 2014 we played him in the playoffs again so then you have us playing each other in the playoffs four four times so it just naturally it brought the rivalry back yep. and uh and yeah i feel like right now it's probably where it was when i first came in the league yeah it's not really there right yeah. like it right. was in the heat of what 08 to 2014 right but uh but yeah you never know what the next spark is yeah. going to be to 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 revamp that that rivalry? Yeah. What gets said? Like you're about to drop gloves with a guy. What is the like back and forth chirps? And and who chirps the best? Uh, <laughs> see, I'm not a big chirper. Really? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not. I've never not really, like vocally. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you want to go? It's kind of like one okay, of those. Yeah, yeah, you want to yeah. go? You want to go? It's like, okay, <laughs> let's go. Uh, like I'm gonna kick your ass. Yeah, like, just yeah. Say that stuff. Yep. Uh, Is there a guy that you're like, wow, he just said some crazy metaphors before he <laughs> well, <laughs> dropped the gloves there. That was crazy. Yeah. It's poetic. Well, actually, Marshy, Marshy was always oh, wow, yeah. that's oh, some good okay. great chirp. More yeah. creative yeah. on the chirping. Uh, Sean Thornton, also another great oh, chirper. Yeah, 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 there we go. They go up to guys and be like, you could pick the hand you want me to beat you up. Yeah, with yeah. I've seen that video. Yeah, they got a mic. He would say that. Uh, he would say shit like that all the time. He 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 was very creative and he was witty and funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, how was that guys with Sean you, Thornton, though? That's oh, like, because you guys were like the modern day bash brothers for <laughs> us for that yeah. certain amount of time. Yeah. And it was, it was cool, too, because that team in that era, we were, we were like a modern era of the big bad Bruins, yeah, exactly. you know? You had me, you had Thornton, we had Zidano, uh, McQuaid. Boychuk, Horton, yeah. and then you had guys. Yeah, then you, but, you did, but we had almost every weight class covered. Exactly. And, you know, Ferentz would fight. Uh, Greg mm -hmm. Campbell would fight. So we had all the, the middleweights, the light heavyweights, the heavyweights, right. you name yeah, them. Right. We had them all. We had every every weight class, I guess, covered. But uh, so, yeah, it was it was, it was was a really fun group and uh, to be a part of. And, and going back to Boston, being that type of team mm -hmm. with that type of identity right. in this city with yeah. these fans, yeah. you know, it kind of all just for, went yeah. together. Yeah. I, I was going to say, when you said, like, first game you went out, you had to show yourself. I was like, Boston is the city the perfect to market. show that. To show out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, totally. I remember, like, being a kid and, like, I, so one of my best friends, her dad had, like, season tickets. And I would just go because it was fun. Like, I was, like, wicked little. had no idea what any sport was. I'm, like, seven. And I literally, like, I would go home, like, there was a fight mom in front of us. And, like, <laughs> she's, like, oh, my God, I can't send this girl there anymore. And I'm, like, it's what we grew up with. I don't know. Like, it was yeah. so fun. I love that. Uh, little game for you. All right. I'm going to say Boston slang. All you got to do is give me the definition. Okay, I'll you do know? my best. Here we go. We'll have to come up with a name for this. Well, segment, but. Just remember, <laughs> I haven't been here for eight years. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I'm getting it back. Yes, right. yes. I will start really light. Bender. What does a if someone's like, hmm, you're a bender. What does that What does that mean? Oh, I know what it's to go on a bender is, but <laughs> like, I'll take that too. Right? That's a, yeah, on a bender's good. Well, so is that like you're a drunk? Oh, I was. Uh, Bender is like oh, the, like the hockey sling. Like, what you're yeah. taping your ankles with the clear tape? Yeah, like, like look at this Bender. <laughs> hockey know. sling, not Boston sling, right? Exactly. Hockey, hockey, hockey slang. slang, like NHL hockey slang. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, but I'll take Bender too, in the sense of you know, couple beers, couple nothing beers. crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, barn burner. Oh my god, barn burner. That's so funny. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what? <laughs> She's, yeah. So it was a barn burner. Is so like. Uh, it's kind of like what the Patriots were the other night. Or really? the other night. <laughs> like a shit show. Yeah, like yeah. The, the, the yeah. barn burner. I like that. Yeah. Uh, biscuit. Someone's like, sauce me the biscuit. Oh yeah, the puck. The puck. Yeah. Boom. Uh, duster. What is a duster? Oh, uh, this could be so <laughs> many things. <laughs> Yeah, Duster is just some guy that he, he kind of looks greasy. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. He could even have like a mustache, yeah. you know, and a mullet. Would Duster in the like corporate world be like an intern? Like, look at this new, like. A little, yeah, I guess so. It's yeah, like, a uh, this one, I, I can't even, I don't even begin to know how to define oh, it. God. Post game blowy? What does it even mean? <laughs> what is it? What was that, Luch? Oh, what geez. is that even referring to? This is no limit podcast. That's <laughs> ridiculous. I don't, I get most of the terms. Yeah. That was. <laughs> 
It doesn't matter. That one just gets the legs loose to make sure (laughs) all the junk is out of the legs. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. But even uh, so, from Vancouver, right? You guys won the show in Vancouver. One of the craziest series, which I'm sure you talk about all the time. I always had a question, man. When when Burroughs bit uh, Bergeron's finger, what's the talk? On in the mm. uh, on the bench when Bergy comes back, being like, "This motherfucker just bit my yeah. finger, dude." Like, what's going through? Like, what's mm-hmm. the chirps well, that start there? We were like, "Did this fucking guy?" That's actually, what I mean. Did he actually <laughs> like, bite Bergy? And like, out of all people, biting Bergy right. too. Like, he, right. you know, Bergy is a guy that you know he never chirps. He goes right. out there, he plays hard. He's respected by like literally everyone. Mm-hmm. So like, for him to actually fight or bite Bergy, yeah. We're like, are you fucking right. kidding me? <laughs> right. We're like, we're gonna get this. We're gonna yeah, get this guy back. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it kind of like started to piss us off, and right. oh, yeah. we started playing better after that and whatnot. Right. Uh, we were actually pissed off that he didn't get suspended from that, right? Mm. Because then, lo and behold, he scored two goals and the overtime winner in game two yeah. after that, mm. mm-hmm. but. At the end of the day, we got the last laugh. So, oh, yeah, yeah. hell yeah. yeah. And I gave him the old, you know, oh, yeah. put my finger in his mouth to see <laughs> if he played me. Oh, but uh, oh, but at the end of the day, when you have the last laugh, yeah. you know, that's that's, that's sweeter. Yeah. That's the sweetest, la- sweetest laugh out of them all. And yeah, what's 100%. what's that got to be like in front? Of, like, obviously, you're not with the Canucks, but in yeah. front of your hometown, hoisting up the Stanley Cup. That, that was great. You know, it's like, obviously, it's a dream come true to win a Stanley Cup. But like just to be able to get to do that in your hometown is is just just adds to it, right? right. Like not only did I get to just win a Stanley Cup and I won a Stanley Cup with an original six team, right? You know, I got to do it in my hometown and uh it was it was obviously easy travel for my parents and grandparents yeah, and family yeah, yeah. to to make it to the game. But uh and one of the cool moments of that was was you know all the fans that were at, at the game, well, most of them, I would say probably 90% of them, they all stayed and waited for my turn to lift the cup. Yep. And when it was my turn to lift the cup, they they gave me a loud cheer, you know, uh, right. cheering for their hometown boy. And yep. um, I've been very, you know, grateful and, and appreciative of that to, yeah. for them to make that, make such a special moment for me, even that much more special. Right. right. So totally. for them to do that for me was, was pretty cool and pretty awesome. And yeah, it's just... Uh, one of those feelings I I I I I try to describe, but I yeah, truly can't yeah. describe. And uh, you know, it's a, it's a feeling that I've been trying to chase to to do again because since then I hadn't won a Stanley Cup. So yeah. hopefully, I get to do that one more time before uh, <laughs> before uh, before my career. Yeah, we're hoping oh, too. Feel yeah. We're ready. There is a number I'm going to read you. Let's see if this rings a bell here this is a this is a receipt <laughs> uh what does the number 156,674 and 74 cents right mean to you how what many is, miller lights is that <laughs> for those wondering, <laughs> it's miller lights i think those, that's the difference yeah for those wondering that is a bar tab Potentially Luch picked up in company. No. I don't know. It means How it did you get stuck time. with yeah, that? Yeah, walk us through <laughs> the excitement there. What happened that night? Well, actually, it was it was Shrine down in Foxwoods. Okay. Oh yeah, they held they held our cup party for us uh, that we did after the parade that Saturday. And, uh, and yeah, um, they set it all up for us and everything. And they actually hooked us. The reason why, the main reason why that bill is so big is because we had a $100,000 Ace of Spade bottle. There you no. go. And the oh, is, for one right. They make those? That's what I said. It's not yeah. the bottle, I'm not even kidding. The bottle was the same size as the Stanley Cup. Oh, really? my God. Yeah. yeah, this was the biggest bottle of champagne that I've ever seen. And it was obviously Ace of Spades on top of it. And, uh, and yeah, that, that, that's the main reason why that thing was so high. But... <laughs> You know what? It was it was a great time. We had, <laughs> we had everything in there. Like we like uh, at one point it was like a mixture of a beer and champagne that and classic. I was drinking like me and Johnny Boychuk were drinking like Captain and Coke. So there's a little Captain Coke mixed in there. Oh hell <laughs> so yeah! It just like oh, that a, sounds delicious. Yeah, yeah. It was maybe a couple of vodka sodas right. in there. Nothing so, crazy. Yeah, That's it was <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun stuff in there, but. Yeah, it was it was a good time and yeah. you know something that 
Bar tab will remind us all of how yeah. good of a time what that we have. Boys can <laughs> drink. Give a standard 20, 25%? Oh, yeah. that is, uh, <laughs> I think it was. Actually. Oh, it was God. 20%. The boys can I think it's something about hockey players that can just drink a little more than any it other seems sport. To be in, well, I think wrong, it seems to be in the culture. Right? Yeah. Isn't like a cultural thing? A little thing? bit. Yeah, a little bit. I think it's that part's starting to go away, too. Is it? Yeah. Just kind of like Same everything. Thing. I mean, I think just because, um, you know, the schedules now are, are, I think, a lot more taxing on the body than it yeah. used to be. Mm-hmm. Like the, right. f- the fitness has evolved, totally. nutrition's evolved. Yeah. Also, guys are being more careful in what they're doing as far as you know, not not putting themselves in bad positions. Yeah, and, right. Social and, 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 and with with now you can't hide from anything with social media right. and all yeah, that type right. of stuff. But right. But yeah, it's just those things. So. But you know what? When we do get together as a team and we get to have fun, you know, we do like to have yeah, fun. It's going yeah. down. You know, it's and, happening. Yeah, yeah. And then we don't get to do it often. Right. And, you know, I, and it's not just hockey players. I think athletes in general, you know, we're, it's, it's in us that when we do something, we go all out. Yep. You yeah. Know? Yep. So, uh, so whether we're into it and doing something, it's something that we do. So that, that I think that has a little bit to do with it as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. Coming back to Boston now, looking at last year's season, the Bees set the record. What was that record? Most games won. Yeah, 65 won. wins. Yeah. Yeah. In the regular season. And then to end how it ended. <laughs> yeah. What Tough. are your thoughts on, you know, maybe what went wrong? in that situation and then going into this season what do you think we can do to to be in a similar spot with a different outcome <laughs> well uh i wasn't here but you know it was <laughs> not but, my fault yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just so the jury knows yeah. right? no but uh just watching it from an outsider uh you know even seemed in that series everything was going right for him and sometimes it just takes one moment right, yeah, right. you know and then you know and I and and this 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 is not on Marshawn at all. But if you guys recall, in Game Five, he had a breakaway with like ten seconds left, mm-hmm. and Bobrovsky made made oh, a big yeah. save yeah, on him. Yeah, yeah. And it just seemed like after that, you know, Bobrovsky, he he took their t- like nobody could beat him after yeah, that. Right, right. And he was, he was standing there. on his head, and it took them all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. Right. Yeah. And it, sometimes that's all it is. It's just one one, one big bo- moment. Yeah. Right. Just yep. to, this just to shift it, and then when you get to an overtime situation, anything can happen. Right. And Matt Kachuk scores a goal, and then now Florida's starting to feel good. You right. Know, where the Bruins are probably feeling deflated after that win. Mm-hmm. You know, because they're thinking, okay, if we would have just scored that goal, the series is over. We're, we're focused on round two, but instead, you know, they're deflated, and now, you know, yeah. the, the yeah. Panthers are feeling good about right. themselves, right. and they roll it into Game Six, and they win that one, and all of a sudden. They're rolling again. Right, now the right. doubt is in the Bruins' head and not in the Panthers' head because, you know, of, of the momentum. And, you know, eventually, you know, I guess that's kind of what happened. So, but going into this year, I think, you know, a lot of the same guys are still here. Um, lots to look forward to. Um, and I think it's an exciting year, too, because it's the, it's the centennial season for right. the Boston Bruins, the first mm-hmm. American team to, to hit that mark. Yep. So, uh, yeah, and... And anytime you come off a, a bad ending like that, yeah. uh, you kind of use it as motivation, you know, in the summertime and then going into the next year. And I'm, and for me, I feel like uh, we're in the right headspace right now. Right. So it's just about you know finally getting the getting the regular season games going so we could right. start oh, yeah. start playing some real hockey. How's the how's the locker room with uh, Marshawn rocking the sea now too? <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's great. It's 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 really great. I've always had a real great time being being teammates with Marshy. Uh, he's a lot of fun, real good <laughs> competitive guy. Uh, but also, you know, knowing him back when he was in his early twenties, mm-hmm. and even as a teenager, to uh, what he's become now, it's it's great to see him just like mature as a as as a person and oh, yeah. and as a hockey player. So he he's definitely earned uh, the C on his chest. And oh yeah. Uh, I think he's going to do a great job leading leading this group. Yep, one of the stronger players with the puck is Marshawn. Oh, little fire hydrant, it's I call un- him. Dude, dude, un- dude, how he bodies like off people when he controls the puck down yeah. low is un- yeah. unreal. Yeah, little fire hydrant. What is the uh, what's the like meaning behind that? Well, I'm just thinking, you know, a fire hydrant's <laughs> small and you, yeah. you can't move. Oh, let's go. Yeah, 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 fi- Things not like going that. anywhere. It's not yeah. going anywhere. I like that a lot. Small, it's compact, it's strong. Yep. Right. You try to right. move it, you can't move. <laughs> Plenty of water. Right. Yeah. We yeah. gotta go back to one of those legendary moments too when you 
put this guy through the glass. <laughs> All right, we got to talk about yeah. that because that that's etched in Boston sports history is you putting this guy through the glass. Now, when that happened and you realize everyone's okay, are you then <laughs> skating around as like, cause I would be skating around like I own this town. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that is a scene to, to put it lightly for the people listening and watching. That's a scene that would be put into like some weird hockey movie. Right. Someone going, that doesn't happen like, like that. Duck stuff. And then in comes Lucic and see you later. What was going through your mind? Uh, honestly, I was, I was pretty pumped that I did. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean, dude. Because I'm not going to lie. Like, I've seen it as a kid growing up. Yeah. And right. those are one of the things you're like, you know what? If if, if, that, if that's something I could do, that would be right. That yeah. would be awesome. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. Said, right? So, like you said, once it happened, I was like, oh, shit. It yeah. actually, it <laughs> yeah. actually yeah. happened. You're, like, yeah. sitting at the bench and yeah. everyone's like, holy shit. Yeah. 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 There was, yeah, there was a couple people in the front row there. And yeah, everyone seemed to be fine, which yep. was great. And then after that, I was skating around. And if you actually go back and watch the video, as they're cleaning up, you can see me, and I got this big smirk yeah. and <laughs> smile on my face. Just so proud of like, you. Yeah. Like, I did that. Wow, I actually that's did that. That's pretty cool. I could say that I did that. Oh, yeah. They need to get a. There's Bobby Orr right here. The class. Uh, they need to be a bronze <laughs> statue of you going through shattered glass. glass. Yeah. I think oh got a long way to go to get to that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that was that was one of those times yeah. where oh my gosh. Yeah. Totally. And so, it was early in my career, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's one where it's going to make the highlight reels on everything. Yeah. Now ESPN going crazy because they rarely show the hockey yeah, highlights totally. over there. So, like, slightly different question. You came into the NHL at 19, right? Yeah. So, obviously, you've had great experience. You've been through a lot. For new players now coming in at 19, like, what's, like, your best piece of advice that you give them? Because I'm sure, like, one, your brain's not matured at that point. Like, I'm sure your mindset was completely different. You've now seen Stanley Cups. They all want Stanley Cups. Like, what's, you know? Uh, you know what? Just just have fun with it. You know, yeah. I've always been a guy that's, you know, I even when even when there's stuff that sucks, you know, like when your muscles are sore, if you have a, a really hard workout, right. you know, I still try to find the fun in it, yeah. you know? Yeah. So just try to always just find the fun in it all. Um, and one thing, like, I remember being a 19-year-old, uh, it's the first time you get into an 82 game schedule mm -hmm. and you don't realize how many games that is <laughs> mm -hmm. until you're actually in it. Right. So, you know, just finding a way to stick with it. It's finding a way to, uh, just, you know, be motivated every day, but also, you know, having fun with everything as far as not just the hockey part, but, you know, enjoying the city that, Mm -hmm. uh, that you're in, you know, trying new things, going to new places, yep. checking out new restaurants and, and all that type of stuff. I think, I think that's a part of, uh, a part of it all and, and, and enjoying the, the experience of, of, of what being a professional athlete, mm -hmm. uh, can offer. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, obviously you got to put the work in and you got to put the effort in and, and get the result on the ice, but you know, uh, but you got to find a way and having fun doing that. Yeah. I love that. What are your thoughts? Um, like you said, it's kind of getting watered down as far as the fighting's going. Over there in the queue, which, um, with what they got going with their fighting rules and shit like that, where do you stand on that? Because I feel like, because them taking it away is maybe because the game's changing a little bit, not so much now, but taking away the opportunity of the kids like you to where that was their one shot to be on that team. And now they're wiping it out completely. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's why I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just because I wouldn't, I would have never have gotten noticed or never have gotten a chance to make a team or make it into junior hockey if if there wasn't fighting. And you're taking that opportunity away from 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 potential really good hockey players. Right. And mm. and you know what? Say what you want. And I know we've talked a lot about fighting and me fighting, but. I've also, you know, I've also scored over 200 goals in this oh, yeah. league, yeah. and I've also put up numbers in this league. And and like I talked about before, those things always got overlooked. Mm -hmm. You know, I was I never made a team, and I was never going to make a team by by my goal scoring and and playmaking and all that type of stuff. Even though I had it, mm -hmm. but the, and, and the only reason why I made these teams was because there was the opportunity to fight. And, you know, that was the main reason why I made the teams that I did. And it's the main reason why I stuck around as a 19 year old in Boston. Right. It's because I could hold my own right. with the big boys, yep. yeah. you know, as a 19 year old. And then on another point, 
I find with the no fighting, it doesn't allow the players to police themselves, mm -hmm. you know? And so when that happens, if I, if I cheap shot someone, there's no fear of the opponent coming after me and making mm -hmm. me, you know, pay for that. Right. You know, uh, so that's a great the point. way the way that I view that is can okay, you take fighting away so you take the fear of of consequences you, con yeah. Yeah, of, of repercussions mm. from dirty plays and so what ends up happening is is to me dirty plays go up and dirty more then it creates more dirty players mm -hmm. so those are those are the two reasons why you know I dislike it and mm. I disagree with it and I just hope that it doesn't trickle into the other leagues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like that. I also think like sometimes people forget like you guys are grown men. Yeah. With this job. <laughs> it's not like you're like in middle school anymore. And so if you're a grown <laughs> man, they, like you said, there has to be that sense of fear because like obviously as a- She's saying fear, by the way, yeah. just in case. <laughs> but, like obviously as like a young kid, like you naturally have that as like grown men, like you don't, so you need to like have that in the sport to like distill it into like have that like adrenaline and that motivation and that drive and you know it's just like it's it's a job but it's also you guys are athletes like yeah exactly and and we take really good care, like you said we take really good care of ourselves and all yeah. that type of stuff and yeah i just find allowing the the athletes to police themselves right. mm -hmm. it actually makes the game safer if you ask yeah, me. yeah. Right. i like that yeah. right. and post game i'm sure yeah <laughs> you can't get out on the ice what are you no, gonna do out on the ice yeah. Like. Yeah, if, I get a a if i get a street fight i'm getting i'm getting right. in trouble yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, on the ice i just get to sit in the box for five right. minutes you know? yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. I like that. but you did make a good point because you were there was a season like what you were obviously feeding these guys their lunches but then you're leading the bruins in scoring on some seasons like you're out there making plays, always in the right spot at the right time, getting these goals. So it is like you said, you're you're out there able to do this, but on top of that, putting up goals, mm. putting up big plays, top two lines yeah. everywhere you're going, you're out there, you're on the ice, getting this ice time, regardless yeah, right. of fights. Just, and, and I think that's what really started resonating, especially around here, being with like the Lucic fans. It's like, all right, dude, this guy, like obviously he holds court on the ice. Yep. But then we're also putting up points and, and big numbers too yeah. in big situations. Yeah. yeah, just I guess just fitting in with the identity of the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, final question for you here. We cannot thank you enough for coming on No Limits. I want to get into your mentals. Who and what motivates you? And do you have any mentors you go to and maybe, you know, times get rough or maybe have an off game? Do you have any any mentors or coaches or co-workers you go to to, to kind of lean on when times get rough uh i think I, for me it's always been competition i've mm. always loved competition even back when i was in grade school even like and i remember my pe coach he, uh, asked me one time and he was like you know i've never seen a guy even if it was like a warm-up run he he would try and win it right you know right. And, and i never even thought of it that way but i was just always competitive and when I was doing something, I would always do it to the best that I could do it. Right, you know? right. And yeah, I, I would always try to win everything that I was doing. So I guess just competition drives me and and I love that. and win, yeah, and winning drives me. I, I, you know, I love the feeling of winning. Right. I love being on winning teams. Um, I love being a part of a team and, and you know, I like and I've knock on wood. Uh, you know, my body's held up and yeah. I've been healthy that I've been able to play this long and continue to, to be able to play. So, so yeah, those, those are like, yeah, it's, I still have motivation when I go to the gym in the yeah. off season and that's all. I, I think that's just because I'm a, I've always been a really highly competitive guy and I think that's just something I've instilled within and, and, you know, the other question, you know, you know, my dad was was really good for me. Uh, he unfortunately passed away mm -hmm. eight years ago. So uh, sorry, I've, had, I've, sorry had, I've had but it's funny to your question. I've had trouble finding people mm. to fill that void yeah. when I when I would get down. Right. You know, and I and and, you know, just, you know, and I've done some things with like mental health and all that type yeah. of stuff, um, you know, and it is important to have people that you could. Totally. go to and and you know there were times in my career as after my dad died especially like when i was in edmonton 
um, I, I, I felt like I was alone, mm. you know, because I didn't have uh, someone, you know, that I could talk to or, or, or help me and all that type of stuff. Right. And, and, you know, sometimes that person isn't always your significant other, totally. you know, it could be someone else. And, mm. you know, so far this year, uh, you know, they have people here in the organization and, and I've had a couple of meetings with with one of the docs from the team, and he's been actually really great for me so far. Nice, and yeah, so just having him as an outlet uh, has been great. Oh, I uh, love that. But yeah, other than that, you know, I I still talk to some. Uh, I still talk to my GM and my old assistant coach from from back when I played at WHL and for the Vancouver Giants. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. they've always been a really good support system for me. And and same with my 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 trainer. Yep. Uh, I started with him when I was 17 years old, so I've had him for the last 18 years. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and he's always done a good job of uh, getting me physically ready, but also, you know, you know, keeping me humble. Yeah, I right. think we all need to be humble totally. once yeah. in a while. Absolutely. You know, and forget, you know, sometimes we forget. And, you know, I think gratitude has a lot to, that, that goes into that a lot. Yeah. So just, just, just reminding yourself of all that type of stuff uh, helps with all that mental mental stuff that. and that's 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 kind of how i go about my business but uh when it's game time and it's game mode you want to get into that yeah. you know let's fucking go mode yep. Yep. you know yep. you got to do what you got to do and that's why i'm actually happy to be teammates with marshy again yeah, yeah. yeah. Buddy. Marshy yeah. Would, we would rowl each other up yeah yep. totally and i'm excited to do that again with him starting october 11th oh, and yeah. uh and look forward to having a good season. Oh, oh hell yeah. This place season? is going to It's going to go yeah. nuts. <laughs> and you look great. It's almost hard to make eye contact. <laughs> 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 this place is going to go nuts. Me blush <laughs> Luke Cheech yeah. is back in Boston, baby. We'll see you game one. Later. Later.